She is a youthful 12,000 years old and a fresh new hell for anyone afraid of peopley places. She is the Niagara River, best known for her little drop-off point called Niagara Falls. Pack your selfie stick, hand sanitizer, but leave your need for personal space at home. I haven't been back here since I was a little kid, but now that I see how much of a tourist hub this has become, I don't think anyone goes over the falls as a stunt. I think they do it to get away from all the damn people. If you've heard anything about the falls, it's probably the stunt stories of people going over the 170 some odd foot ledge in barrels. Their interviews would be fascinating, but they're all dead because gravity works and so does natural selection. Of course, I'm more interested in the oddities of this world and knowing there are hundreds, if not thousands of skeletons down there. I'm curious to know if anyone's ever plugged this baby up to take a look. The answer is yes. The first time in the mid 1800s because of an ice dam. The second time in the 60s on the American side of the falls. Engineers needed to clear debris and they were considering removing the rocks below to make nature look prettier. They eventually gave up on that idea and uncorked the falls, but not before finding guns, knives, and all sorts of other things, including two bodies and a dead deer. Now, Allison is a police officer and I am a former reporter. So at some point in any adventure, it gets dark. We just have sick minds. Anyway, I was really curious to know how many people had deliberately thrown themselves over the falls. We all know that stunt people do it, but I mean, deliberately. Wanna guess what that number is? 20 to 40 people every single year. 20 to 40. And like, practically none of them make it because I don't, well, I guess that's the point, right? But there's no lagoon under here. It is straight rock. Straight, oh. Today, it's illegal to attempt any kind of daredevil drops here, which is probably a good thing given the swarms of people pushing to the edge and leaning over hard to get that hashtag amazing selfie for the gram. Most everyone with a heartbeat and a smartphone comes to Niagara region for this place and this place only, which is kinda a bummer because they're really missing out on the little treasures nearby, like Olcott Beach, where the gangs of unruly tourists are tiny, smiley, and here for the prizes. There you go. You have a good day. It just, it was meant to be. It was meant, and as a result, it has turned this town around. 20 years ago, Rosemary moved to Olcott, at the time, a carcass of its former glory. And I walked by this park, which was just a, a gravelly pit and the carousel building was all dilapidated and run down and broken windows and everything. And I wondered why no one was doing anything about it because Olcott was known for being an amusement park. In the early 1900s, Olcott was a Lake Ontario picnic paradise. So popular, a grand hotel was built along with a trolley line from Lockport where we were just a few days ago. When the automobile came up, People could get here very easily, and they didn't have to spend all day waiting on the train for taking them back and forth. It made Olcott a day trip, not a major destination. After the Great Depression, businesses closed forever, and the lights on the amusement park carousel dimmed to dark. My sisters rode it, and uh, my daughter rode it. Oh my so God. When Until decades later, when Rosemary took that walk. This was closed for many years. The only thing that was left was the carousel building. In 2001. Wow. That was all Rosemary needed to get started. That and an ungodly amount of money to try and restore the entire amusement park just as it was in the 40s. First and foremost, she would need to find rides original to that time period. We put a blurb in the Carousel Trader, which is a trade magazine for amusement parks, 
asking if anyone had pictures in the 40s of our carousel building. We did get a reply, a man called me from Culver, Indiana, and he said, I don't have any pictures, but I do have a ride that came from Alcott. It was a period kitty car in perfect condition. I knew it, I rode it as a child, and uh, my daughter rode it, and I said, we would love it. I said, but we have to get a carousel first. Uh, we, we've just been raising money for a carousel, and we don't have enough money to get another ride right now. And he said, I have a carousel. One ticket. It took three years of fundraising to pay him back, but piece by piece, Rosemary found and refurbished mid-1900s carnival rides, and five years later, the original amusement park at Olcott Beach was rebuilt. Oh, come on. Just as it was, the last time the bell rang to start the carousel. The greatest reward is seeing the children. On observation alone, I think the adults are having the best time, specifically the volunteers. I'm retired. I have to have something to do. I, I can't sit in a saloon all day. The park is staffed and operated by local volunteers determined to bring back their beach town and give the next generation the same joys here that they once had. I, I have a good time doing it. Yeah, if I didn't have a good time, I wouldn't do it. I mean, uh, it's enjoyable watching the faces on these children when they go uh, along and get on and off the rides. You can see the enthusiasm of the little ones. Because of the volunteers, the amusement park is able to charge exactly what they charge in the 40s, 25 cents per ride. Looks like they got you in jail in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Time your favorites though. At that price point, the rides can't operate constantly. The electric bill would be too pricey. So don't do what I did and miss your place in line. I finally found a place in America where I feel like I'm above average height. Being a credit card and PayPal kind of gal, I only have two quarters on me and I blew them on Esmeralda. I think they have PG these a bit. If you don't grab a horse in time, the Wurlitzer Carousel Organ is there to entertain you. That name should sound familiar. Remember, we were waiting for Baby Moo to arrive, and Barb gave us the grand tour of the Wurlitzer building, where these were built? This is one of their original creations. It's the music Margaret and Patrick heard here when they were little kids, and when their kids were little kids, and today when their kids, little kids, now come to ride the same rides that they did. Oh my gosh, I remember just being a little, little, little kid. Um, me and my brother, he's two years older than I, and we used to come from town of Tonawanda over the, the brick road down the hill to get here. And those were the memories that are still in the head. No one's missing overpriced concessions, and frankly, the win of a small trinket at the Rubber Ducks races feels just as victorious as any huge stuffed animal. There are no long lines, no merchandise, and as far as I can see, barely any cell phones out. Because that's what Olcott Beach Amusement Park was intended to be in the 40s, and that's exactly what Rosemary and a team of volunteers rebuilt today. The purpose was never profit. The purpose was to build memories for a new generation. I guess, you know, you just don't think about that. You just do it, you know, because you love your community and, you know, it makes people happy. I'm happy I'm out of quarters so these eight-year-olds can't witness my Olympian level ski ball skills. Places like this are the heartwarming consequence of hard work and answered prayers, both of which are taking us to our next lesser known location. That, that is not the truth. No, back not back to, to Niagara Falls House of Sidewalk Prayer, There's a God that cares. but to this one about 40 minutes down the road, also built by donations 
and on a foundation of miracles. Thank you.